Kingdom Hearts 3 on the Xbox One. Here's a research dream of a game that I was able to rent <laughs> from Redbox. Uh, what's a green situation? Whatever. Let's not complicate things. I'm playing on the proud difficulty mode, by the way, because I'm not scared. Yeah, some jerkiness in the frame right here. It, yes, I saw some Digital Foundry videos where they said that this game actually has a higher frame rate in their testing in some areas during some scenes than the PS4 and the Pro do. And possibly even the Xbox One X. I'm playing on a base Xbox One, by the way. But it might just be a resolution thing. Like they, they're, they're probably lowering the resolution to like 900p or something. The other ones are at 1080p or higher. Yeah, and it just chokes at times. I should mention this game would not install on my Xbox One, which is offline. It would not install until I downloaded a firmware update from the Microsoft website, which is January 2019, around January 30th, January 31st, 2019. I want to say this is the same firmware that was available late last year, but it's like a lot of, apparently a lot of Xbox, new Xbox One games have this problem. I don't know if the PS4 has the same deal. Because my, my PS4 is a lot newer. I got it used. It probably had an updated firmware attached to it. But there were a lot of games I wasn't able to install because I because I didn't have the firmware. I didn't have the I didn't have the firmware that I needed. So you basically, you can put the disc inside the console, and as soon as it starts, it'll stop installation at zero percent because it's, apparently it's doing a dashboard check. And where am I supposed to be going here? Okay. I can jump at the B button, which is actually not ideal. Yeah, and obviously this frame rate's not great. Yeah, it's above 30, but it's kind of jittery, so, that's, so I probably got to patch that. Was I not paying attention to what I was supposed to do here? I'm just jumping off the side, who cares? Screw you all. Actually, wait. Oh, wait, there we go. What if I said yes? Oh, it's supposed to affect my stats, right? Yeah, this whole thing. Yeah, this was in Kingdom Hearts 2, I think. That this entire sequence about the stained glass and the floating platforms was in Kingdom Hearts 2. And I want to say it was at the end of Kingdom Hearts 1. Voice video's going to get a whole bunch of copyright strikes, isn't it? <laughs> it's synergy, baby. <laughs> We're in the, uh, we're officially in the Disney era. Disney will own everything in about 10 years, I'm calling it. By 2030, Disney will basically own video games. <laughs> Strangely enough, that's actually the one thing that Disney doesn't own right now. They seem to own your childhood every other way. <laughs> they own comic books. <laughs> they own Marvel. They own Star Wars. They own a couple of other things, I forget. And of course, they own Disney. So apart from all the comic books, you know, they, don't, they don't own Transformers yet. Don't think Disney will make them an offer, though. What about this? Pinky swear. So Disney probably won't come out with a video game console, but they're willing to work with Sony on one, I guess. <laughs> what if I said yes? What if I said yes? I'm not paying attention to any of this. I kind of just want to start the game. Uh, the installation uh, took about maybe like five minutes, I want to say, from the disc. And you were able to start the game from there. I'm skipping a bunch of cutscenes to get to this point. But it's like a lot of modern games where it's like there's a big prologue and then a tutorial. So you can start the game without the disc being completely installed onto the hard drive. But you know how it is. It's... It actually makes sense for a game like this because it all because the last game started out in a started out in this little floating cor dark floating corridor bit. But it's a good excuse to install the rest of the game in the background, I guess. Which you can't do on PC, which I think is kind of amusing. <laughs> Basically, I could never install it if this game were out on PC anyway. I couldn't install it onto a PC without downloading the entire thing from Steam first. So that's one good thing about consoles is that, yeah, you might be able to install the game pretty quickly as long as you're offline. You can patch it later. 
Which is actually what I would which is actually why I'm playing this game offline. Tutorial. Press A while attack. Select the attack with Sword's Keyblade. After landing an attack, you can keep pressing the button to chain together a combo. At the end of the combo, Sword will unleash a powerful combo finisher. So yeah, button mashing. Press X without moving, and Sword will block any enemy attacks. Again, I'm playing on the... End of the combat base tutorial. Remember, I'm playing on the proud difficulty mode, which is the hardest mode available at this point in the game. Take a select and list of commands to attack in the direction of the enemy with a yellow indicator. Mash, mash, mash. Wait. I only pressed it once. Pressing RB. The camera stand lagging. Maybe we'll change it. Use L RT to change targets. RB to lock on. Remember, I'm playing on the Xbox One. Right trigger to switch targets. Press X to block enemy attacks. If you tilt X, I'll press you with dodge roll in that direction instead. Like that. Yeah, the... Yeah. It's not very smooth. Not very fluid. Yeah, it looks decent, but yeah, that... Yeah, this is what Digital Foundry was complaining about. Kind of, yeah, kind of choppy. So that's disappointing. They could have re they could have reduced the resolution. To they might have reduced the resolution to 720p. Oh, who knows? Because I don't think they have dynamic resolution scaling in effect. And you don't. There is no option to lock this frame rate to 30 either. Oh, they want me to block an attack. Sorry. So why? Dodge roll, dodge roll, dodge roll. Okay, so we're good. So you want me to block an attack with the uh, Y button. Okay, there we go. Chain attacks together. We have to know what's called a combo. So we just mash on the attack button. Obtain money. Damn money. We're good. Enemies drop prizes. The green prizes restore HP. Blue prizes blue prize restore MP. There's no meter for MP yet, apparently. Yeah, that was easy. <laughs> okay, fine. So let's see how quickly I get my butt kicked on proud difficulty here. I mean, yeah, on the... was it? Kingdom Hearts 2 when I played that on the PS3? The remix? The difficulty was pretty tough in some areas. Like, there was Beast Castle at some interesting areas that were pretty tough. Okay, yeah, RB, yeah. Where's my lock on? There it is. Am I supposed to be jumping up there and hitting his hands? Okay, there's that Destati music. Just a second. Mash, mash, mash. Whoops. Okay, it's just mash till he dies. Works fine for me. At least you're not fighting in a dark corridor anymore. I'm fighting outside. In the clouds. Yeah, he's always tried to go for this sort of dreaminess in the story. Which is probably the only reason why it makes any sort of sense. Just to say it doesn't. I guess it's just dream logic anyway. I still think the opening to Kingdom Hearts 2 is one of the best in any video game I've played. <laughs> Even though it's basically just a weird music video. Was that H Hikari? I don't remember the lady's name, but that was the name of the song. Now, does it make any sense? Absolutely not. Don't be absurd. <laughs> and he's not, and Nomura's not exactly Miyazaki, but you know what? <laughs> I bought in. I bought into that opening. I bought into that music, anime music video they made for Kingdom Hearts 2's opening. I want to say it's more of a trailer. Am I going to die? I'm going to die. If I can't heal myself, so I have any ideas here? Yeah, I might be able to beat this guy. Yeah, that's right, the enemies might give me some health. Let's beat them up instead. He didn't give me enough health. I lost it in one, I lost it in one bit. Better give me some health, dog. Better have my money. Okay, let's go around the other way. Jump. I think it's going to be blazing over the next five or ten minutes, so be careful. I'm going to lose a lot of health, it looks like. I'm not dead yet. This better be a fight I can't lose. <laughs> Starting to get bored after. I get bored already. Hey, I won! Hey, look at that. <laughs> Nash to victory. You're gonna teach me how to fight. 
I won't have to teach me how to fight anyone. Okay, press A while the attack isn't selected in the list of commands to attack in the direction of the enemy indicator with a yellow indicator. Enemy marked with a yellow indicator. Next. I'm pretty sure they already explained this. Okay, fine. Just smash. Okay, so I already know this part. So I guess it'll give me another opportunity to look at the tutorial, huh? Game help. Continue. Game help. Okay, next. Yeah, we know that. So how do I end this? Can't end it. Okay. Let's just do what I did before. It's fine. So it is a research stream. Okay. RT. RB. RT. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> Did it again. Sex to block enemy attacks. If you tilt the helmet, pressing X will dodge roll. Okay. So dodge roll with the X button and the, with, the, with the left stick and the X button. It will just hold down the X button to block. There we go. Problem solved. Combo. Mash, mash, mash. Oh, there we go. This entire scene looks like something from Final Fantasy Saint Dissidia. <laughs> okay, we're done. This is, um... We're good for now. This is Yoko Shimomura on the soundtrack again, maybe, huh? I mean, this game didn't come with a manual. What were you expecting? <laughs> I rented it from a vending machine. It's not like the game includes a digital manual or anything. Why would anyone want to read that, right? Who wants to read manuals that are digitally stored on disk? And don't get me started on Microsoft. I mean, okay, remember the old days when, like, I, th I want to say Dead Rise, not Dead Rising, uh, Dead Island. That game had firmware on the disk. So when I rented that game, it installed a firmware upgrade. So I was able to play the disk on my console while having to download it. I, I, now, the Xbox One offline update is like four and a half gigabytes, something like that. I guess they didn't want to put... I mean, this disk only takes up 34 gigabytes. So if they wanted, Microsoft could have said, okay, print this firmware, print this firmware update on the disk so we can install it directly from the disk. But no, I had, to go, I had to go to the internet and I had to go to a library and just download the download the firmware update from the library, save it on my USB stick, and plug it in. It took me half an hour to, to get this console into, into the offline update mode. I had to, like, I had to do the three-finger salute with two hands. I had, what, I had to hold, like, bind on the side of the console. No, I had to turn off the console completely, unplug it from the wall for, like, 15, 20 seconds, plug it back in, hold the bind key on the side of the console, and the eject button. My hands are pretty, my hands aren't that big, so that's kind of tough. And then I have to use my second hand to press the power button while holding down bind and eject. And then I had to hold it down for like 10 to 15 seconds till it beeped twice, and then I can let go. But it took me half an hour, I'm like, why isn't this working? Why isn't this working? I unplugged my console three times, I couldn't even get it to work. I've done this three times since I've purchased this console. And it's still infuriate. It shouldn't take half an hour just to turn on a console to a special mode that will let me install a firmware. Just put it on the damn disk. Jeez. And people be like, get a, go on the internet. My internet collection is like, it's like, D, it's like 768K. And the fastest internet I can find right now is twice as fast as that. So it would literally take, so literally it would take me like, five or six hours at least to download this firmware update at least assuming that assuming the modem doesn't go out at some point because I've had that happen to me I've lost my connection on several occasions so I like being able to I like being able to download you know a firmware update from a library while I'm out and about but the fact that I would have to leave my house just to get a firmware update that will allow me to download this game just 
Basic, so basically, yeah, if you don't have an internet connection where you are, if your internet connection is very slow, you won't be able to play this game unless you've already installed a firmware update from, like, November or something. I don't know when this firmware update came out. Microsoft didn't say. Maybe it shows up in the console info. I don't know. Am I supposed to be paying attention to the story? No. <laughs> we, we are not... No. Remember, this is not that channel. We came to game, not read mashups and fan fiction. Okay, what was it? Uh, what was his name? Seth Kearsley. Uh, one of the animators and the uh, directors behind, um, what was it? Mummies Alive, if you remember that show from the late 90s. Um, Dilbert, the animated series. And one other show I forget. He did, he, did, he did at least three big series, as I recall. I think he might have worked on Family Guy. I don't remember. But Seth Kearsley was apparently involved in a possible Kingdom Hearts animated series. I think it was supposed to be anime. I don't know if the studio was supposed to do it. But, yeah, apparently back in the day, Disney was thinking about making an animated series out of the show. Because he, uh, he blabbed. Seth Kearsley was on a podcast, a Kingdom Hearts podcast. And, um, yeah, he went on this, it's on YouTube. And, the inter and during the interview, we said, yeah, we were supposed to do a show. And we, I think he even got involved with the development of it. I don't, I don't know how far it went. I don't think they ever got any, like, you know, animated footage back or anything. Because I've seen shows that never got released, you know, at least get, you know, sizzle reels made about them. But I guess they were developing it. Um, knowing, I don't know where, I don't know if it, I don't know if it was an anime anime, if it was, like, an American series that would be exported. Because you know, remember Lilo and Stitch, uh, that series got a Japanese series. Like, they, obviously it got the American ABC series. And it got an anime that was made in Japan. So I'm very curious about how that turned out, actually. But I don't think that, I don't think that show ever came out here in America. I don't, I don't even think Disney, I don't even think the Disney Channel showed it. I'll ask around. But I think that Anime, Lilo and Stitch was supposed to stay in Japan and maybe in, maybe in East Asia. It was never brought over here. But yeah, you can reasonably argue that that yeah, the Lilo and Stitch, the American series for Lilo and Stitch, the ABC show, that was an American show because it was written over here, it was developed over here, it was storyboarded over here. They sent it out to a, a rough draft Korea. South Korea, and they sent, I think they sent a few episodes to the Philippines. So yeah, that, that's not anime. But, you know, based on the geographic definition, yeah, the, the, the Japanese developed version of Lilo and Stitch, that one would be anime, even though it arguably looked the same. I mean, it looked a little bit different, obviously. I mean, the, the, the models were basically the same, as I recall, but obviously the animation style itself was different. But yeah, I don't think Rough Draft Korea... I don't know if Rough Draft Korea has ever animated a Japanese series. But they've definitely done... I mean, they've worked on, you know, Simpsons and Futurama. And, of course, a bunch of Disney series. They were a pretty reliable group. Uh, Rough Draft some of the best animators in Korea for a long time. And, of course, nowadays you get, you know, guys like, what is it, JM, Stu JM Animation. No, the guys who did uh, Legend of Korra, they're out in South Korea, too. So they're pretty much on that, they're pretty much on Japan's level now, so. You don't, no more, no, don't worry about South Korea, it's going to be just fine. I'm curious to see how many more animated movies we get out of there. Uh, at least, that were made in South Korea. Mm. Use your D-pad. Yeah, we'll think about it. We can assign shortcuts later. We'll do a tutorial, why not? I assume we're just going to bash buttons and press the D-pad for magic, so we'll see how it goes. I hope that firmware update gives me a more reliable recording, because I dropped a lot of frames on the last few videos I did. And I'm recording onto an external USB drive. We'll see how it... It's, it's, a, it's a thumb drive, though, but it's more than fast enough. So I want to say it's the console, not the, not the thumb drive. I'll confirm that later. Down. Try casting fire. Press right on the D-pad. There we go. Mash on the attack button to cast that fire. 
If you chain attacks together, magic you can get a combo with magic and lose a powerful magic finisher. Okay. Oh, okay, so hold LB and press the buttons next to the action. Okay. Okay, so mash, mash. It's B. Oh, keep casting fire. Okay, so it's not like you, it's like you can do fire then melee attacks, right? B, B, B. Let's target this dude first. RB, LB, B. Mash on B. And that's the magic finisher. So I'm very curious to know if I can do melee and then switch to magic. Like, you know, doing melee to projectile, like Devil May Cry or something. Magic gauge will begin to recharge when we run out. Only after recharge is complete can you do magic again. Fine. You don't spam magic, I understand. So the game's still installing. By the time we're by the time the actual game starts, <laughs> the installation should be done. Here we go. Okay, we're in an arena now, so let's do this. Can you get that camera centered around? This is ridiculous. Okay, those big dudes are kind of dangerous. At least in other games they are. I love how I blocked the camera too. That was great, huh? Mash, mash, mash. Mash like it's a Kingdom Hearts game. And he's down. Gang or gank increase strength. <laughs> Donald Duck defenses are Donald Duck's defenses are up. As one would expect. <laughs> That's canon. Okay, I killed somebody. Actually, I think someone else might have killed him. I was just swinging at a rock. I mean, maybe you use an equip item, you fine. Yeah, this, all this, all the uh, choppiness in the video. Well, actually, you won't be able to see it because I'm recording at 30. But yeah, this video is pretty chop. This video footage is pretty choppy. In real time, hit a dead end. I'll give up. We can run up walls that are faintly glowing. Tutorial. Free running. So we're going to play uh, Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts Creed. The Keyblade Creed. So I don't have to hold RT. <laughs> that's good to know, I guess. Automatic jumping. Yeah, this game does everything for you. And you can move side to side, like Ariana Grande. Whoops, here we go. Wait, up. Then. Okay, so it's it's not tight. It's like you have to weave back and forth. You weave left and right. Hold A as you close in a target to form a diving strike. Okay. We're on rails. I missed, I missed the button. Do I have to go back up? Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back up. How much higher do I have to go higher? Excuse me. Wait, okay, what's going on? Oh, I can't go over that. Just a second. Gosh darn it. It's gonna be a thing. I can't go over that. Okay, fine. Uh, A. Yeah, screw that up. I don't think that's what you wanted. <laughs> okay, it's got, I gotta go back up and climb this stupid thing. Okay, let's climb the ivory tower. You know, well, this, wouldn't I see this in a never-ending story? It explains why I don't have my horse. Let's go up and over, see if that's possible. They make me do this whole thing again, aren't they? <laughs> Probably should cancel this tutorial. Whoops. It's funny how I'm falling, I can just climb back up the wall. It's kind of amusing. Okay, press the A button. Okay, so it's just a QTE, I suppose. Smashing. Uh, some objects want to be destroyed by diving strikes. Smashing, lad. What ho? Okay, so we're in Hercules now. So what ever happened to Disney video games? Because I remember what was it? Epic Mickey sucked. They made a sequel though, but whatever. 
What's that other game? Uh, yeah, Disney Infinity. That thing shut down in a hurry, didn't it? Does that game even work if you don't have an internet connection? Like, can you even, can you even install the game? Is there, like, any content? <laughs> because that game... That game is, like, $2 now. It's like Skylanders, I want to say. Which means it probably doesn't work. <laughs> I'm probably never going to play it, unless I can find it for free, I suppose. I don't even think Disney Infinity is at the library. It's probably just as well. But yeah, Disney Infinity was apparently a terrible game. Like, it's basically just, like, you know, a bunch of arenas that are linked to Skylander-like amiibo-like figures. and It's like a bunch of arenas that, like, don't have a whole lot of content. This are incredibly simplistic. Tom Chick did a review of it, and it was thought was just god-awful. Because there was basically no content. <laughs> it's just, you know, wandering around, getting into shooting people like an Atari game, apparently. It's like no real... Yeah, like no real depth at all. But I guess he was also comparing it to Skylanders, which he really liked. But I reserve judgment on Skylanders. I'm never going to play a game that requires figures to play. Unless I can get all the figures for free, I guess. Because knowing me, I would just play the game just to see if I get anything. Just to see if I can install it. Yeah, we're going to skip James Woods. Don't read his Twitter. He has issues. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> Come on, he's only playing the god of the underworld. There's not, it's nothing political about that at all, is it? Well, technically, it was just, he was basically a car salesman. <laughs> that was his bit. <laughs> I get it. Look, he's a good actor. I'm, probably sh I'm sure that uh, Seth MacFarlane loves him. Not to be confused with Seth Kearsley, who I was talking about earlier. Um, but I think, I know that Seth Kearsley worked on Mummy and, um, not Mummy, Mummy's Alive and Kingdom, not Kingdom Hearts, Mummy's Alive and Dilbert, the animated series. I don't know if he also worked with Seth MacFarlane on Family Guy at some point. But a lot of these animators probably end up, you know, getting jobs as storyboard artists on other shows. So I'll ask around. But I just remember Seth Kearsley from Mummy's Alive. That was the first time I ever saw him. And Dilbert wasn't a bad gig to have back then, I mean... I mean, it didn't look great, but it was basically UPN's tentpole show for a couple of years. At least it was supposed to be, at least for at least one season. Because Voyager was ending. Or I think it had already ended by that point. So UPN needed it. Yeah, it was, it was, it was wrapping up. They had Seven of Nine in there. <laughs> they brought Seven of Nine over, and I guess they saved the show. But I think by 1999, Dilbert was pretty much UPN's last hope. Because after the whole Desmond Pfeiffer situation... <laughs> Yeah, don't ask. Desmond Pfeiffer. Uh, after that whole thing, UPN was really, really on the down slope. They had, I, think they still had, I think they still had SmackDown on it. Although I think that had already moved to a U USA, by the USA, to the USA Network by then. I'm not sure. But, yeah, Dilbert was pretty much UPN's last hope back then, and it, it bombed. They brought it back for a second season, but I want to say it bombed. I mean... Did anything on UPN not bomb except for SmackDown and <laughs> Voyager, really? Maybe Enterprise had a couple of good episodes that made a, got a high ratings, I don't know. It only got like 40 episodes, right? Maybe 44. Finally got our first save point. Jeez, can you believe that? Save. Tutorial's unlocked. Well, at least they gave me the opportunity of doing the tutorials early. What's in the shop? Well, it's a Square Enix game, so why would they not have Moogles? Moogle shot, don't forget to drop by the workshop where you can see these synthesis materials you're collecting your travels to create new items. Visit the workshop, you automatically leave any synthesis materials you've collected with the Moogles based on which you've collected, maybe present rewards. Close. Eh, we don't have anything, so I'm not even here. Back up. I guess I can buy potions. How many am I buying? Oh, well, I don't, I, don't have, I don't have that much money, so I'll have to come back later. Eh, yeah. Final Fantasy Tense. 